Like in many states across the country, New Jersey had redistricting in some of those congressional districts very different this year. Now, last night, two candidates hoping to represent the newly redrawn 11th district faced off in a debate at William Patterson University in Wayne. Incumbent Republican Congressman Rodney Freelingheisen, he served in the House since 1995, and he's seeking a 10th term. His Democratic challenger, John Arvanites, is the former mayor of Roseland. It was got, got potential to be a closer race than any recent race that Congressman Freelingheisen has faced. Now, this new district, it's more Democratic than years past, where party registration is given the GOP uh, members like Freelingheisen a 7% a boost. Now, that advantage, it's been whittled down to about five points. The debate, it was sponsored by our friends at the Record of New Jersey, and it was moderated by yours truly for Fios One News. The debate, it covered a wide variety of topics, including health care reform, equal pay for women, mass transit, investment, but one of the most heated exchanges took place when Alfred Doblin, editorial page editor of the record, asked about veterans and the use of our military overseas. What military role should the United States be playing in the future in the Middle East? And, and particularly, there's a lot of concern about what's happening in Syria. Should, should we be looking at sending in ground troops? Should that be on the table? Well, uh, I think the American people are exhausted quite honestly, from two wars. But l let me salute those in uniform and their families who have paid, in some cases, the ultimate sacrifice, and those that are still there. And we, we have military in just about every country in the world where we have an embassy, although it seems at times some of those are restrained from protecting our own diplomats. But let me say that uh, uh, we, we are still the world's superpower. And I think we, we, we demonstrate through our actions, hopefully, that uh, we, we have the interests of freedom and opportunity foremost in our mind. I, I, I am not interested in putting troops into the Syrian situation. I serve on the Defense Appropriations Committee. I serve on the House Intelligence Committee with the Republicans and Democrats. We have, as a pending disaster, this is nothing political about this, in Syria, if Assad falls, 52 percent of that country are minorities. We could have a refugee disaster even worse than it is today. So I, my, my focus is let's be supportive of, of what the president's doing, but let's keep our eyes open. A, a far more serious problem, obviously, is Iran, uh, their, their potential to acquire a nuclear weapon, and their stated objective, their stated objective to make us their foremost enemy as well as the state of Israel. That is unacceptable. But Syria is, is a problem, but Iran is a bigger problem. The order that I believe we should handle the Middle East is diplomacy, sanctions, and war as a last resort. Sanctions that have been put in place in Iran are crippling their economy right now. They're working. We need to let those types of sanctions work. Give it time. With regard to our allies, we need to protect the interests of our allies. I support the President's continuing efforts to dismantle Al-Qaeda and to pursue any person or group who attacks the United States of America. My opponent, many times, has voted to go to war. He's voted to extend war, but then doesn't support our veterans when they come home. He voted no on the withdrawal of our troops from Afghanistan. He voted no on longer breaks between deployments of our veterans. He votes no on tax relief, on death benefits for families that lose loved ones overseas. He votes no on providing the same type of health care to reservists. And the one thing that troubles me the most is that he votes no on, on providing assistance to homeless veterans. You can't send our troops men and women sacrificing their lives overseas and when they come home, turn their backs on them. We need to vigorously improve veterans' benefits and services, and we need to show them the true gratitude for what they put on the line, and they sacrifice their lives, not only for them, but for their families. I'm very proud to be a Vietnam veteran. I'm a life member of the VFW. I've been involved with the American Legion for 40 years since I got back, I'm involved with the AMVETS, the DAV, 
And with all due respect to my opponent, you're clueless in terms of my record and support for veterans. The voting record my, my, speaks for itself, Congressman. The, the work that I've done on behalf of East Orange and the Lions VA Hospital, they're building a, a village at, uh, at uh, Lions VA Hospital as a result of funds that I got for the VA to look after homeless veterans. I've been working with Project Community Hope there uh, for the last uh, 10 years. Uh, I've been involved in an outpatient center in, in Morris Township. Uh, I, I have been involved with uh, veterans issues for, for years, and I, I support veterans. I have visited uh, Walter Reed in Bethesda. I, I have... Congressman, if we could, I've, we're going to keep no, the foreign okay. policy conversation. You guys, I'm sure, can weave these questions. Well, the, these, 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 are, these, these, are, these are misrepresentations. Well, you'll I have know. an opportunity no. in the next answer, I'm okay. sure, to address Good. it as well. Fred, uh, on the subject of foreign policy, um, let's keep going, and the question goes to Mr. Arvanides. Mr. Arvanides, Afghanistan, the president has articulated a timetable to remove troops by 2014. Is that a, are you satisfied with that timetable? Is it too soon, too, too late, or should there be no timetable at all? Well, I'm not in Congress right now, so I don't have the same type of information that Congressman Freeling Eisen has. But based on the information that I have right now, I support our president's plan. If we can get them out sooner, let's get them out sooner. I do not want any man or woman that serves our military to be in harm's way. So if we can bring them home sooner, let's bring them home. That war and also the war in Iraq was built on the backs of our children, grandchildren, and their grandchildren. It was borrowed money. It was put on a credit card, money that we did not have, unfunded wars that increased the deficit. That I don't stand for. We need to bring our troops home, protect their lives. Let's invest in our country here. Let's build America once, one day at a time, infrastructure, put people back to work, help the veterans find jobs help the veterans find homes, help retrain them. Let's bring them home. Uh, I'm enormously proud of uh, uh, young men and women and not so young who serve in the regular military, the, the Guard and Reserve, and I've been strongly supportive of them on the House Appropriations Committee that deals with defense. I have visited them where they've made their sacrifice. I have visited with their families when they've lost their, their, their loved ones. Uh, I'm happy we're out of Iraq. I will be happy when we're out of Afghanistan. But we need to make sure that as we depart, we leave some sort of a structure to make sure that we never have the type of attack that we had on our country on September 11, 2001. We live in a dangerous world. We have Iran, which is working overtime on developing nuclear weapons. Unless people are dead asleep, they are working on underground. They are, to some extent, mirroring what's happening on the, North, on the Korean Peninsula in, in North Korea. We, we need a strong military. I'm identified with a strong military. I don't apologize for having a strong military. And we'll be right back with more from last night's debate right after this.